Have you lost interest in your hobbies or things you used to enjoy or look forward to? Have you noticed a change or a difference in your sleeping or eating patterns? Do you feel ineffective at work or at home? And are you generally exhausted all the time? If this is the case, then you may be suffering from burnout. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to recognize if you're burned out, how to recover from it if you are, and how to avoid getting burned out altogether. So if you wanna hear what I have to say on this topic, then just keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, My Extraordinary Ordinary. My name is Danielle and in today's Wellness Wednesday video, we're going to be talking about burnout, what burnout is, how to recognize if you're burned out, and what you can do about it if you are, and how to avoid burnout altogether. Now, one of the ways I'm going to do this is by sharing my personal story with you. And the truth is that I have been very burned out lately. And some of you that are subscribed to my channel or that follow me on social media may have noticed that I have not posted any content in like two or three weeks. And I went from posting every single day to not posting anything and the reason that I did that is because I became very burned out and it wasn't just burned out doing YouTube it wasn't just burned out at work it was a culmination of pretty much everything going on in my life and a lot of things hit me all at once so that's when I decided to take a step back and just stop doing YouTube for a bit until I felt better. And I'll share my personal story as we go throughout this video, but first, let's talk about what burnout is. Burnout is defined as a state of physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion caused by prolonged excessive stress. Now, it used to be years ago that we only talked about burnout in terms of in the workplace. But let me tell you, burnout can happen to anyone in any circumstance. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you're a CEO of a big company. It doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom. It doesn't matter if you might be on disability and you're not working or you're not raising children or raising a family. It doesn't matter what life situation you have. Burnout can happen to anyone and it can happen for a variety of different reasons. Now, I do believe that this definition is accurate, but I also think think that burnout really can manifest and affect people in very different ways. So we have to kind of look at that and you have to really get to know yourself well so you can identify the triggers of burnout in your own life. So now that we've defined what burnout is, how can you tell if you're heading towards burnout or if you've completely reached a state of being burned out? Now, while everyone is different and everyone will experience different levels of symptoms at different times, there are some common symptoms that we can really identify that really characterize someone that is starting to become burned out or someone that has reached the burnout stage and is completely burnt out. And the first thing that most people can identify or will start to experience is complete exhaustion. They just feel exhausted all the time. Now personally with me, something that I also experienced was on top of my exhaustion, and I would say that I experienced that first, I really started to become irritable. So I was just really irritable. I was really crabby and cranky with my family. So I felt kind of out of sorts. I was feeling exhausted. And then after that, people kind of can become cynical. They can really become sort of bitter or cynical. They kind of feel like, what's the point of me doing X, Y, Z? Why am I working so hard on this project at work? It's probably not going to turn out good anyway. My manager's not even going to notice. Why am I bothering to make this really nice, fancy dinner for my family? They're not even going to say thank you. I'm going to have to do all the work to make the dinner, clean up all by myself. It doesn't matter what I do. Nothing I ever do is good enough. So there is a level of cynicism a lot of times that can start to creep in and especially with things that you might have once really enjoyed you might have once really found value in that really would have been something that you love to do in your life all of a sudden those things no longer are enjoyable so like for example for me I almost didn't go to my women's Bible study last week because I just didn't feel like being around people. I didn't want to deal with people. I just didn't feel like going. And that's totally the opposite of normally how I am. I usually will get my energy and my passion 
from being around people, from studying God's word, seeing my friends. I love that environment. I love that atmosphere. I feel completely refreshed and recharged when I get to be around people in social situations. I'm really outgoing and I love being social. So I always know something is not right with me when I don't want to take an opportunity to be with my friends or be social. And I ended up going to my Bible study and to be honest, I said literally nothing, which is also very unlike me. Anyone who knows me personally who watches this video will know that I'm definitely a talker. I love to contribute to the conversation and I just ended up crying at my Bible study and just feeling a level of kind of hopelessness and just feeling kind of embarrassed and kind of feeling like why did I even bother coming but again that's a signal or a symptom or a sign that something is wrong especially if you're a person that's like me that really gets a lot of pleasure and joy from being social from seeing your friends from doing things that you really love so that's another really big symptom that you have to watch out for. Another common symptom people will start to experience when they start to feel burned out or especially when they are fully burned out is that they experience decreased performance at work. Now when I say this, I'm not talking to people that just work a 40 hour a week job per se, but I'm talking to anyone that has any endeavors in their life where they are accountable or responsible to someone else, whether that be volunteering, whether that be something else, maybe you're running a business or maybe you're doing something on the side, anything that you're doing that is valuable to you, that is income producing, that is something that you are accountable to someone else for, when you start to experience decreased performance, so even if you are a stay-at-home mom or if you're retired and there's things that you normally do in your week, maybe certain days of the week you do laundry, maybe other days you do gardening, and maybe other days you do XYZ, and so you have standards for yourself or a schedule for yourself that you've set up that you normally do on a daily or weekly or monthly basis and all of a sudden you're just not seeing that you're able to complete those tasks. You're not seeming to be able to concentrate. You're not seeming to be able to focus. You just don't seem to have the same level of energy or passion or motivation to get things done when you just can't focus, when you just don't have the performance or the productivity, you can't seem to accomplish your tasks. And then on top of that, you don't even care that you don't get it done. You're like, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Who cares? And you just start to kind of let things slide. And that's really a slippery slope because when we start to let things slide, especially tasks that we know we have to do, whether they're work-related or home-related, or maybe even from a standpoint of a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad when you're caring for your kids, rather than make dinner, you're just taking them through a drive through because you don't want to deal with the cooking and the cleanup and all of that that goes along with making dinner. Maybe you skip bath night a couple nights because you don't want to deal with that. Maybe you kind of let the household chores go. After a time, all of our daily tasks and things that we know we need to do can kind of start to pile up and they can feel like too much. They can start to feel really overwhelming and that's when all of these feelings really start to Play into one another and that leads me to the last symptom of burnout which is physical symptoms and for me this is one of the first symptoms that starts to manifest itself I started having a ton of health issues when I started feeling really burnt out and my stress levels were really high and I could tell that my cortisol production was literally through the roof I am a person that is prone to canker sores I've been prone to canker sores ever since I was a little girl it's just a thing I live with I take some supplements to help me manage them naturally and I have really good oral hygiene and my diet's pretty good so that all seems to really help and it has reduced my canker sore outbreaks significantly and for the most part they really don't bother me but stress plays a really big part in that and that's one of the first signs that I'm really stressed is if I have an outbreak of canker sores in my mouth and I got a mouthful of canker sores probably six or seven of them to the point where it was painful to eat it was even painful to drink anything without a straw it was just really miserable my mouth was really sore and that's partly why I stopped doing YouTube too because I couldn't talk 
for very long without pain in my mouth because my mouth was full of canker sores. My neck was killing me. I was going to the chiropractor like five days a week. I wasn't sleeping well. I had lost my appetite. So you can see all these symptoms that I'm sharing with you that I recently went through. These are all symptoms that I've talked about of burnout. But for me, when I start feeling burnt out, my physical symptoms a lot of times will manifest before some of these other things will start to manifest, like lack of productivity or feeling cynical or just feeling lack of motivation or even feeling exhaustion. I would say for me personally, exhaustion is probably one of the last symptoms that manifests itself. And for many people, it's one of the first symptoms. But I think because I'm a type A person, because I'm so, so busy, I don't really give myself time to think about it. I just have a schedule I like to stick to and I just keep myself moving at a pretty rapid pace every single day and I don't really let myself think about it. And I do prioritize sleep and so that does kind of help combat exhaustion. But recently I wasn't sleeping well because I was so stressed out and I was having nightmares and some other things going on. So obviously that plays into the exhaustion factor, but that's kind of one of the last things that I feel. I feel a low grade level, I would say, of depression. And that for me manifests as just lack of motivation. It's not like I'm laying in bed crying all day, but for me it was kind of like this feeling that I had that all I wanted to do was crawl in bed and sleep. I just really wanted to sleep. I wasn't interested in eating. I wasn't interested in socializing or doing anything that I considered fun or enjoyable. I just wanted to sleep. And that is definitely not my normal personality, but that's kind of how things manifested for me. And with these physical symptoms I was having, I wasn't able to exercise. And that for me is something that will greatly impact my mental health. As you know, I value exercise a lot. It's so good for us to move around, to have movement, to exercise. It's fantastic for our joints, fantastic for our bodies, and obviously it's great for general health and weight loss, but primarily for me, although I do use it as a health management and weight loss tool, the primary focus and role of exercise in my life is to regulate my mental health. But when you take away a big component of that, and I'm not able to exercise due to health challenges I'm going through, it really impacts my mental health. And I think that's another reason why I became really depressed because I wasn't getting all the benefits that my body normally depends on through exercise. And you can kind of see how all these symptoms start to build on one another and they all work synergistically together to make you feel even more overwhelmed and even worse. So when we get to this point or when we feel like we're starting to become burned out, what can we do about it? What do we do? I think one of the most important things to realize is that you really have to know yourself. You have to know your own symptoms. You have to know your limitations and you have to realize when you're starting to see things in your life, whether it's personality traits, whether it's feelings that you have, whether it's changes in your sleeping or eating patterns, changes in behavior, changes in mood, when you start to see things in your life that are not normal feelings and behaviors for yourself, pause and step back and stop. I think it's important for each of us to understand and learn what our biggest triggers can be and what are some primary symptoms that we will start to see because everyone's different in the way that burnout will manifest in their lives. Different life situations impact people differently and we all have different things that we're dealing with. We have different things going on and there can be triggers and sometimes it's just overwhelm and intense busyness. But whatever the case, realize that none of us are immune to this and we just need to get a handle on what we can do to avoid it altogether, which would be the number one best thing to do. Or if it does happen to us, how we can recover from it. So the first thing that's really important in recognizing and recovering from burnout, if you're starting to feel like you are starting to feel burned out or if you're already in full on burnout mode is to really recognize and accept I'm burned out. And the sooner that you can recognize that you're starting to feel burned out, the less chance you have of getting fully burned out 
and the better chance you have of recovering a lot quicker. So recognizing that you're starting to feel burned out, recognizing that you are completely burned out and that you need to make some changes in your life. And this can be difficult, but again, that's where I say step back, take a look at what's going on in your life, really analyze your health, analyze your feelings, and recognize where you are. You need to evaluate your life. A lot of us say that we have so many things we have to do, but a lot of times our have to do category is filled with things that we want to do or even things that we think we should do. I think it's really important when you take a step back and after you've recognized that, okay, I'm becoming burned out or I am burned out, to evaluate your life and take a sheet of paper and make three columns and on those columns you're going to write have to, want to, or should. So three columns, have to, want to, and the last column is your should column. Now your have to column would be things like caring for your children, making sure they're fed, making sure they're bathed, making sure they get to school, all the things you have to do as a parent to care for your children making sure that I get myself to work, doing the basic functions of my job appropriately. There are things we all know in our life that we absolutely have to do, and those are kind of non-negotiable things. So those go in the have to column. Now the want to column are things that maybe have been in our have to column, but those aren't things that we absolutely have to do. Those are things that we want to do. Maybe we've made some volunteer commitments. Maybe we have told ourselves and made commitments to ourselves, like for example, myself with YouTube. I've made a commitment to myself that I hold really seriously, but at the end of the day, that's a commitment to myself. I'm responsible for that commitment, and I'm not responsible to anyone else for that commitment. So that really is a want to, not a have to. And then our should column, that can be kind of a toxic column, and that a lot of times can be things that other people think that we should be doing. Maybe we're involved in a lot of volunteer opportunities and maybe other people are coming to us and asking us to do certain things. Maybe we feel like we should continue to do certain things because we've always done it and people are expecting that we will do it. Well, that's not a have to or a want to. That's a should and sometimes a should comes from ourselves that we feel like oh we just should do this because we've always done it and people are expecting that we will do it sometimes it comes from external sources sometimes other people are saying oh you should just pick up a part-time job or you should volunteer at this organization or you should do this or that or whatever the case may be and you really have to write those down and I would say if you're suffering from full-on burnout it's time to eradicate everything in your life except the have to column and you have to be really firm with yourself about this and really honest with yourself about this and that's why I stepped away from YouTube because I was so burned out I just couldn't handle anything on my plate I had to stop and really evaluate and I had to spend some time taking care of myself and that's what I did so really stepping away from everything you possibly can even volunteer things and this really comes about by being willing to have some honest and open conversations and that can be really challenging and there was something that I had volunteered to do at church and they wanted to change it to a totally different kind of event. I was feeling really overwhelmed. So I sent an email and I set some boundaries in place and I just kind of said, I'm pulling away from this. Here's what I'm willing to do. And I think that through that email, it was recognized that a conversation needed to be had. And I got a phone call and that was so beneficial because I was able to really share what I was going through personally and the fact that I was feeling burned out and also I was able to share that I need some help. I can't do all this on my own. I don't want to continue to do this all on my own. It's too much for me. And that leads me to the next thing that you need to do to recover from or avoid burnout altogether. And that is don't be afraid to ask for support. Don't be afraid to ask for help. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. But how many of us don't do that? We are not willing to ask for help. So many times we put these expectations on ourselves because we don't want to burden or inconvenience someone else, we don't ask for any help. But how do we know that we're not robbing them of an amazing opportunity 
to help us with something that we're passionate about. How do you know that that person that you might ask might not have the same passion? Maybe they're too shy or timid to come to you, but they're just waiting for you to ask them. So you don't know unless you ask. You really need to ask for help. You need to seek support because we can't take on the whole world by ourselves. As much as sometimes we like to think that we are, we're not superheroes. I know a lot of times I just think, I'm a super mom, I can do it all, but we can't. And when we stop realizing that everything starts and stops with us, that we're responsible for doing everything ourselves, then we can truly avoid and start to really recover from burnout. And a lot of times it's these valuable conversations that we have because most people around us may not even realize what we're going through. I can tell you that the person I talked to at church had no clue what I was going through with my health, had no clue that I was upset, had no clue that I was burned out. And it was really on me to share this with them so that they could start to help me. So people will want to help you if you just share with them that you need support, if you just ask people for help, if you just start to delegate, they will be willing to help you, they will be more than willing to support you, and you will feel so much better. And along with that, the other way we completely avoid burnout or recover if we are burned out is we start setting clear boundaries. We really need to, in the evaluation phase, step back and decide what it is that we need to take care of ourselves. And I think one of the main problems we have when we get burned out, at least for me, is that a lot of times I overschedule myself. I don't create enough margin in my days, in my weeks, in my months. A lot of times the projects or the things we take on take a lot longer to do than we actually think it's going to take. So that's where we end up over scheduling and over committing ourselves. And that can definitely lead to burnout because we're always in a hurry. We're always rushing off. We're always going 90 miles an hour without a break. And we get to a point where we think, we don't deserve a break. We can't take a break. We have way too much to do. But if you don't ever have time to stop and recharge and rest and recover from the busyness, then you can't be your most effective. You can't be your most productive. You can't put your best foot forward. I always like to give this analogy because you guys know that I'm a personal trainer. The muscle growth that you have when someone's trying to build muscle doesn't actually happen in the phase where people are lifting weights, where people are strength training, people have to rest and recover. And that's actually when muscle is built. Because when you're lifting weights, when you're strength training, you're effectively tearing muscle fibers. And when they are rebuilt, when you are in the recovery phase, that's when your body actually builds muscle. So I've had an experience in the past of dealing with people that want to work out seven days a week. They don't ever want to take a break because they're really excited, because they really want to see results. But when people do this, a lot of times they don't see results and they end up really suffering from a condition called overtraining or in effect, they get burned out from their exercise regime and they start seeing detrimental things happen to their body. They start becoming really cranky. They might become really exhausted. They lose motivation to go to the gym because they're not seeing these results that they so desperately want to see because they're not giving their body enough chance to rest and recover so it can actually do what they really want it to do. The same is true with burnout. We become more productive, more effective, and better versions of ourselves when we build enough margin in our lives where we can properly take care of ourselves when we can have enough true rest and we can really recover so that we can continue being effective, continue enjoying our lives, continue being productive, and we can really stave off burnout. The next thing that you want to do to recover from or completely avoid burnout altogether goes along with what I just talked about, and that is starting to say yes to things that you really want to do, starting to say yes to things that bring you joy, things that you have maybe thought about but thought, I just don't have time to do that, or it would be frivolous of me to do that, or maybe you think that you're not worthy of something like that. The other day, actually yesterday, I took about an hour and a half, I hogged the bathroom in our home, and I gave myself a spa day at home. I did a facial mask, I did a hair mask, I just did some things that I wanted to do, I self-tanned, I took a lot of time 
because it was something I knew that would make me feel really good about myself and it was investing time in myself that in the past I had not taken the time to do because I always thought I don't have the time I'm so busy I have a lot of other important things to get done but then I realized in this recovery process I'm important it's important for me to invest time in myself to help myself feel better to help myself look better and to do things that I enjoy and I want to do for myself and that's really really important to really decide what are some things that you want to do for yourself maybe go get that pedicure maybe go get that massage maybe take a walk maybe take a day and sit outside in the Sun and read your favorite book and just spend a big chunk of time just relaxing and reading a book for fun or go have coffee with that friend that you've been meaning to get together with but you've both been so busy you haven't taken the time. Do things for yourself that really recharge your battery, that really bring you joy because living a healthy life and avoiding burnout altogether really comes down to creating balance in our life. Our lives aren't supposed to be and they aren't meant to be all work and no play. Even Jesus when he created us designed us to have one day of rest. He wanted us to rest. He wanted us to recover. He wanted us to recharge. And we need to remember that we need to do that. It is not only important, but it is critical to our survival. It is critical to our emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual well-being and health. The next thing you need to do to recover from or avoid burnout altogether is to prioritize your physical health, including sleep. It is so important to do this and if you prioritize your physical health every day, every week, every month, it will really keep you from becoming burnt out. A lot of us don't do this because we're caregivers and caretakers of many other people in our lives. We have so many other responsibilities that I've seen this so often. Our physical health gets put on the back burner and if we can't exercise when we want to exercise if our schedule changes like mine did recently we have to figure something else out we have to figure out a way to really prioritize our physical health and we have to figure out a way also to make sure we're getting plenty of good quality restorative sleep there's a lot of things you can use to measure the quality of your sleep there's a lot of wearables and a lot of technology pieces that are out there now that help you do that and there's a lot of really good supplements that are not melatonin that can help you get better sleep one of the ways that you can do this is by practicing sleep hygiene and we've all probably heard these things no electronics before you go to bed being in a dark room being in a quiet room figure out for you what really helps you get into a good sleep mode and helps you stay asleep and really prioritize good quality sleep you're worth it and just know that this is going to really help you recover and avoid burnout altogether and then really prioritize your health eat properly eat healthy eat foods that will nourish you and energize you get rid of empty carbs and bad oils and sugar in your diet really don't depend on those things for energy let your body be your natural energy source and really realize that you are worth it to take care of your body you only have one so take care of the one you have and realize that you are valuable and you're worth it and prioritize it set aside time to really make your health a priority and you will start to feel so much better i encourage you to enlist friends and family members who are prayer warriors to pray with and for you as you go through this process and I guarantee you if you do these things you are going to feel so much better like I said at the beginning of the video I needed some time off I needed some time away and at the time I thought maybe I'm just going to quit YouTube maybe I'm not going to do it at all maybe I'm going to just like not do anything because I was catastrophizing because I was really upset and I was really burned out but after taking some time away after having a lot of hugs from my wonderful kids and my wonderful husband after praying a lot after having some challenging conversations and setting some boundaries and also taking some time to do some things for myself that made me feel valued that brought me joy that were just good for me I feel so much better I really feel so much better and I'm ready to get back on track so you can expect to start seeing content from me on YouTube again I am gonna do my best to create consistent content continually moving forward and I'm really excited to do that because again I finally feel like my 
regular old happy self again and it feels so so good I'm so happy to be back here with you and the last thing I want to say about burnout and this is something I realized as I was sitting in church this morning is that sometimes our emotions can lead us to feel burned out if you have been feeling angry or resentful or bitter towards someone in your life you really need to go to them and really try to resolve the situation. Maybe tell them how you're feeling. You really need to practice forgiveness and maybe it's not a situation or a person that you can talk to, but you really need to find a way to let that go and forgive and move on because holding on to those really negative emotions can really cause us to feel really burnt out and really can cause us to go down a destructive and negative path in our lives emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. So we really need to deal with those emotions, deal with those situations if we can, and find a way to forgive. And in the same token, if you need to go to someone else and ask for forgiveness, then you need to do that because that can cause burnout too. I had to go to my family and apologize for being so crabby and so moody and so tense with them over these past few weeks. A lot of times when we feel physical pain or when we feel just so stressed because we're so busy, we take it out on the ones we love the most. And I had realized that I had kind of done that to my family and I had to go to them and apologize and have a conversation. And again, that can just release you from feeling really stressed, from feeling really burnt out, from feeling really irritable and angry and resentful and all the negative feelings that don't lead us down a healthy path. So when you can release some of those negative feelings, when you can really embrace forgiveness and when you can ask for forgiveness if you've wronged other people, that can really be freeing and it can provide a release that can release you from all the negative emotions and feelings that may be contributing to your feeling of burnout. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. If there's anything that I left out that you think is valuable or important to note about how to recover from feeling burned out, please do let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time here with me today. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. And remember to make your everyday ordinary life extraordinary.